Hello everyone, this is Siege and Ovo 992 and today we're back for another brand new video. It's another brand new video that we're starting off knacker people because that game of football right there was just breathless, breathless stuff because anyone who was coming into this game of football thinking it wouldn't reach the, the drama, the romance, the breathlessness of the games versus Dortmund was quickly corrected people because that game right there nearly finished this guy off with moments and big happy moments, sad moments, moments they made me think I could pick a pencil up with the arse cheeks. I had everything you could want for a game of football and we're here to react and discuss as much as I can remember. And you know son, I'm laughing when I say that but I'm also being deadly serious because after just 15 minutes of this incredible game and win over Red Star Belgrade, I took more mental notes in those 15 minutes of this game than I've done in the last 180 minutes in Scottish football but that's the joys, that's the, the fantastic thing about Europe. You have two teams that's there to actually play football. This is the thing that we all fell in love with and this is what we follow absolutely everywhere and Red Star played their part in the game as well and the longer you watch the recap you'll certainly see about that but honestly my initial raw reactions to that game is just once again so much pride, so much happiness because what I saw right there is everyone to a man giving everything they've got. And you could see that people were not only when the full time whistle went but with all the heavy breathing and that but every single single time the ball went out you could see them catching their breath and everything like I mean sweat was just dripping for absolutely everywhere but not once did they ever stop and everyone in that game we're going to speak about individual moments and things like that but for me that was a complete team performance and every single one of them to a man was outstanding and I, I couldn't be any prouder being a Rangers fan right now but again I'm not going to say the tie's over or anything like that because we're only halfway there as Brian Adams once sang but what a position to put ourselves in when going to their cauldron of atmosphere and everything like that with a 3 no, free nil cushion, I'll take that all damn day. But I speaking of cushion, let's transition into this game recap and break this down because it didn't look like there'd be a lot of the cushion if it wasn't for spot on officiating and again the correct usage of VAR, something we continue to say every single week in our league that that's all that we absolutely want. So let's transition into the game then, shall we? Because despite the atmosphere being good and us looking good for the first 90 seconds of this game, it was one of those that you start to look and say, that's offside, isn't it? Because the ball was into the back of the net perfectly by Red Star Belgrade just the second minute after a long ball in behind. Now again, I think it is one of those occasions where even the player knows he's offside. He is offside anyway they play on the ball gets pulled back to him at the edge of the box and honestly it's a fantastic first touch and the finish gives Alan McGregor absolutely no chance but you could kind of see by even his celebration the man thought he was offside and then after a wee VAR check that took about a minute or two they confirmed it was which was great to see it was done but also shout it to the linesman for getting it correct and all that as well so that was a wee bit nippy bum time and I think we were all the exact same let's just Calm it down now and get a wee foothold. But aye, there's no chance or no time to breathe in European football, especially when Rangers are in charge and especially when Ryan Kent's on the football because you know what he's all about, people. If you don't double him out the game and give him the respect that he well and truly deserves, he will scant you in front of everyone. And he done it again versus Red Star is... I, they didn't learn for Dortmund. They, they came in here with a wee bit of lack of respect, I think, on Ryan Kent. 1v1 on Kent, you're done, people. And Kent runs at him and everything like that. We step over, a wee kind of wee Ryan Kent shimmy, as we like to say here on the channel. But after flicking it over to his left hand side, it gets quite clearly just lazily kicked. And I think the ball's already bouncing away because it's kind of hit off him or anything like that. But if there's contact, contact sorry, in the box, it's a penalty kick, that's the rule, blah, blah, blah. So once we've seen the replay, every one of us was the same. It was going to be a penalty kick, but you can see the boy literally just kicks him for no reason. In fact, I take that back. There isn't any no reason for kicking your foot out and everything and doing that. Do you know why that man kicked his foot out like that? It's because he is absolutely terrified at what Ryan Kent can do with the football, that he just thinks, oh no, he's bet me. I'm going to need to stop him, it's just a reaction, and it's a clear penalty kick after VAR has a look at it. The referee gets pulled there, we check it, shows every angle underneath the sun. Would have liked that versus Dortmund, by the way, and would have scored another goal. But putting that to one side, the referee looks at it, sees the contact, penalty kick to Rangers, the iconic line, El Skipperu steps up for you, and honestly... 
I'm going to be honest with you. It's perfect, right? It's top bin, postage stamp, everything you could ever want for an a penalty kick. But when I was watching it live, I thought he scared that people because it just looked like he had fell on his ass and absolutely sent it up to row Z. But thankfully, people, it's just bread basket. Very reminiscent of his brother's penalty versus Manchester United. The exact same run up, exact same spot. What a penalty kick and what a start and turnaround for Rangers for almost going one behind. To be sitting there 1-0 up. But the VAR gods weren't done than dusty just yet, people. Na 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 na. Because despite that turnaround, you think, right, the VAR and everything's going to be done and dusty. They will talk about other stuff. No, there was yet another VAR moment just a couple of minutes after we took the lead in the game. It's another long ball. You can see what they were trying to go after and go on and attack Rangers that way. And this one... It's just horrendous for a Rangers defensive perspective. I'm kind of hiding my face in that there because I don't want to be saying this because of the rest of the stuff. But, aye, it's no great for Alan McGregor. In fact, it's absolutely stinking because the ball comes in. He should just catch it. He's got it in him. But very reminiscent of the Ross County goal that we gave away with Jordan Whitehead where he just bounces off his end knee. I think he does that again. And it ends up giving the Red Star player a tap into the back and then you're thinking, oh no, I can't handle this. And I'm sitting back, I've got my hand in my face, I'm feeling like the Lassie for Matrix one when she says, no, no like this. And then I see the flag go up and I'm like, alright, and then VAR's going to look at it. And then when you see it, <laughs> once again, VAR is correctly used and it's given offside. But aye, we well and truly got away with that one because that was a potential disaster class. But we got that wee bit of break. And I don't know about you people, but I think the way that that swung around kind of gave McGregor a wee bit of boost because he got away with that, yeah, and you could see him, he was just different. But before we speak about McGregor any further, I want to talk about Alfredo Morelos because it's said that Thursdays belong to Morelos and with performances like that, you can understand why because even up to this point, 15 minutes into the game, he is absolutely bullying folk people. I mean, people are coming into him and they're bouncing off him as if Alfredo's been sitting there spraying himself with flubber. People genuinely bounce, bounce, bounce. And that has ended up how we get the corner that ends up giving us the second goal because he's just bullying people out the way, shoveling them down. They're bouncing off him. The ball eventually goes out for a corner kick. It's a short corner with Tavernier finding my man Jackal. Jackal flips it right into the middle. He's trying to find Lundstrom. It gets kind of headed back but Morelos is at the back post and shout out to whoever it was that scored at the back post because that volley right there was nasty and it's a finish we've came to expect from Morelos especially on European nights he makes the hard look easy but the easy look hard and hopefully we just continue to create hard opportunities for him because when it falls to him like that there's nobody better and somehow some way we are now 2-0 up and honestly it is just Stone Cold Steve Austin hitting them off here and you're losing your mind, you're feeling like oh it's all, all gone our way and then like 60 seconds, 2 minutes, whatever it was people, my mind was gone at this point. So Red Star Belgrade actually get a penalty kick and that's right Rangers had to tweet out penalty kick to Red Star. That's not how it goes Rangers, never do that again and the way it comes in, is that a penalty kick? Obviously, it's a penalty kick. I think the boy's just trying to nip away. I think Jack was a wee bit worried because of the counter-attack and what's behind them, so he just gives them... I mean, it's the lightest touch, but you know what's European football now and everything like that. And again, like we talked about, Kent, if there's con contact... I can't even speak the night. People in the box, they will give a penalty. And the boy steps up and you're thinking to yourself... It's going to be 2-1 now, and this is going to be drastically different, but Alan frickin' McGregor, man, give it, give it to the laddie. I've been asking for McGregor moments now, you know what I mean? I've asked for one, and he supplied me with one of the biggest in a very long time, because not only is this a penalty save, this is a world-class penalty save, people, because this was buried in the corner, and he just full pelts dives for the bad boy. I mean, he nearly throws his neck out, people. He had to hold his neck for about 15 minutes after that. He's not the youngest spring chicken anymore. And the way he landed on the ground, I thought he was going to dust out like a vampire for Buffy with the sheer philosophy that he threw himself at that bottom bin. But he gets there, he paws it away, and you think to yourself, McGregor, thank you for a wonderful moment. Now, I know some people was trying to say, was McGregor off his line and questioning that? No! 
people. Of course he was not off his line. This is Alan McGregor we're talking about. He's not came off his line since last March. Now there was a couple of almost and maybes during this time, but we're going to jump to the 40th minute for the next big moment. And it comes down the left hand side where Calvin Bassey was absolutely sensational again, people. Big Shirley at it again. This lad, just look at his age and what he's been able to bring. This is his second season of professional football. We signed him from academy, never played a professional game. He came in, noon again for Barisic last season. This is pretty much his first full season as a professional. And he's putting out these performances. The way he's grown in every game and what he adds every single match is ridiculous. Can you imagine? Five, six years when this lad gets in his prime, what he could actually become. Honestly, big Calvin, I couldn't say enough about you, but ends up coming down the left-hand side. He's involved with it, Aribo's involved with it, Ryan Kent's, of course, involved with it. The ball eventually finds itself to Glenn Kamara, and it is just a whisker over the bar, and you're nearly jumping up for free, but as you're on the way doing, your touche hasn't even touched the seat yet, people, but the flow of the game shown what it was again because they have actually hit a counter attack and forced McGregor into a save but it's not really like a world class save or anything like that it's a cross the boy's stretching and he just gets a little bit on it and it rolls it towards the goalkeeper but that's the perfect encapsulation on it on it on of this game OTA in the space of 60 seconds we of course have that third goal to talk about and it just shows you what happens when you've got two centre backs on the park when it's no so easy to defend set pieces when it's no just Connor Golton or Bust the threat is there and it's a wonderful ball by Tavnier who whips it it's an outswinger so I know I've took a wee bit letting you know my feelings on that one but it's completely different when there's more than one target team it when you're doing an in-swinger you know what I mean so this is an out swinging corner and yet this it's a gorgeous ball by Tavney, right? And it's his assist in the game. And he was incredible in that as well. But I've came to expect that for the skipper and everything like that, right? And it's a great ball in. But this header for me, I don't know if I'm getting to this age now or anything like that, but I sit back and go, that's football to me because he's battling there against two free boys. The ball's gone away for it and somehow he rises like a Connor Salmon and is buried into the kind of left-hand side of the post now. The same thing that we say constantly, if someone's on the post, they're easily clearing that. And if you go back and you look at the other set pieces that Red Star had, they put a man on the post every single time after that. But thankfully, they believed that BS hype that we believe as well about analytics and all that because they didn't have a man on their post for that. Corner, big Balligan rose and put the game Free now. Now that is technically all the goals broken down, but do not click off today's video. These players deserve better than that because I want to mention a couple of names before we speak about the other couple of highlights and yet another offside goal for Red Star Belgrade because I want to talk about John Lundstrom in this game because this is a guy again that was getting heavily criticised week in week out. What was this? What was the point? Blah, 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 blah. He has not only shot his critics up, they've now got them in the stand singing this man's name. That's the incredible performances this lad has actually done. And just the way he approached the game, I thought, was absolutely excellent. He was like a dog at a park just chasing absolutely everything back there. And he was relentless. They're pressing, they're pressing. They're the sick of the sight. A big scouse, John. And honestly, there was a point after they tried to hit us on a counter-attack a couple of minutes after we made it 3-0 because they started to gamble a wee bit more and put guys forward, that he chased them all the way back, won the ball, and the sweeper roll, he had me sit back thinking he was a scouse Beckham Bauer. People, genuinely, what a performance for Big John. But where they were trying to offer freight and everything like that, John Lundstrom was just like, nah, la, give me the fit. But we, it was us that actually nearly created the fourth goal in this game, or the next goal, I should say, where once again, Tavernier, wonderful ball, and it meets big CB number one. Connor goes and gets his heat on it, and it beats the goalkeeper. It's no straight at the keeper. It's actually gone on target, but unfortunately, they've now got someone not only in the post, but someone on the line as well to get it cleared away, and that is seared, but that wasn't the only heartbreak Connor Golton had in front of goal. But to give credit to Red Star, they didn't stop, they didn't give up, they didn't throw their toys at the pram too much. I mean, there were some challenges and everything that came in. I know, in fact, that actually reminds me, I know Joe Rebo, oh, he should be sent off, but let them peril that pish if they want, all right? They had nothing to do on a Thursday night, but apart from sit and watch us play football, it's never a red card. Have you ever played 
fit before. Sometimes these things happen. It's nowhere near high enough. To be fair, if it's two feet up or a feet up or anything like that, and he's hitting him high on the knee or anything like that, it's a red card. But VAR looks at it for Joe Rebo in the first half and says, no, it's no dangerous play. He's fit, it's downward. It's not a red card. So let's leave all that peddling pish to them. They've not got nothing else today. The day. So moving on, there was a couple other wee chancy errors, bad fouls by them kicking Aribo, kicking Kamara, blah, 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 blah. But regarding the Fitborn perspective, they were still adding some things going forward and they absolutely hit. I mean, you can't hit this one any better, to be fair, to the lad yet. It's a shot that he kind of goes over and out with. It's almost Roberto carlos S because it looks like he's hitting it this way. It curves back in like that one. Like Remember that year we scored versus Celtic where Jelovic used the force to bring the ball back to put it in in the cup final? That's what it was like. It was like somebody was controlling the football, but thankfully it hits the underside of the bar. Disney go in, bounces out, and big Calvin Bass is there with a brilliant block to stop them for getting it on target. So I a little bit lucky there. Speaking of lucky, but I'll take it, people. In the 85th minute after we had made a couple of subs, Red Star get the ball in the net for the third time in the game of football. And I shouldn't have laughed, but it is pretty funny because that's just what happens. When you've got the, the systems in place and you've got the right officials and everything, like you can see the game done properly because let me say something to you right now. See if there wasn't any VAR or anything like that. When a team puts the ball in the back of it for the third time, do you think even the linesman's got the balls to lift the flag up and put that offside? I didn't think see people. So, to be fair, the system's are nuts in place and it gets it spot on. And the way it ends up going into the back of it, by the way, it's a shot that is well saved by Al McGregor and then it's tucked away by the Red Star. But he's clearly offside. Bing bosh. Ruled out. Nice and easy clean sheet. Where they can find themselves a wee bit unlucky where they were just off side and blah 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 they should be thanking the lucky stars that it was the 4 now to Rangers because we're pretty much the last kick or head of the football. Tavernier, another gorgeous ball and you get sick of me saying that hope no people because he was outstanding in the day. Finds Connor Golton at the back post. The goalies, I think the goalie puts him off here and the goal and Golton thinks the goalie's going to get it but he whiffs at it ends up hitting off Connor Golton and gone just wide but I'm starting to look at these now right and I just want to Pitch, Santi. I'm looking at Connor Goats and yet another clearance off the line. That's is that four now in the season he's had so far. The amount of headers he gets at Disney go in, they get saved by the goalkeeper, blah blah blah. I'm starting to think someone's put a curse on this laddie and he won't score again until he signs that contract extension because you just look at the body of work, people. I know a curse when I see one. But why, with that being said, then a Sakala shot, kind of seeing the game out that's well saved by the goalkeeper, that was it, people. It was Rangers 3, Red Star, Belgrade nil, and a truly unforgettable night once again where the player, even my phone's run out now, that's it. Even the phone is tired. I'm tired, I'm sure a lot of you are as well, but there's no chance I can go to sleep because I'm just going to be sitting back thinking about what I just witnessed and what I witnessed again to just underline it, was everyone to a man given everything that they've actually got. I don't even think I've mentioned Balogun's name yet, apart from the goal. What a performance he put in. Slide challenges, being big when he didn't need to step up, when he needed to absolutely outstanding for him. I thought Tavnir again was absolutely unbelievable. Bassey, brilliant. I thought the midfield was spot on. Jacko, Kamara um, and big lunch from I love that midfield and Glenn Kamara's now got the Yarfield role where he's able to go forward and influence the game and if you think back he won the game versus St. Johnson he then done the move and created the move that bet Aberdeen and now for me it was influential going forward again so I wouldn't be changing this when Arfield rested or anything like that. I'd give Kamara a couple of more games now to see if he can really grow with the attack and say because we know he's got all the skill in the world he's got the eye for a pass so he's really impresses me as well and Joe Rebo was powerful Ryan Kent just gives everything, man. Honestly, I'm pretty sure he'll be doubled next week. You'll see the respect given and what he's earned by Ryan Kent. And I'm going to finish it up with just speaking about Alfredo Morelos because not only did he get that goal, his link-up play, his work and everything like that, he's just simply unplayable on a freaking Thursday night. But that's all I'm going to say. I could keep going and going and going, but nobody wants to sit and listen to me for any longer. So I'm going to wrap up today's video by letting you know I am a happy, happy guy. I can't wait to see what you are saying. Let me know down there in the comment section below. The hardest task you have tonight is telling me who your man of the freaking match is, people. But aye, let me know what you're thinking. And if you scroll down, by the way, you'll probably see a lot of different answers and that'll tell you exactly what you need to know. That there was a freaking 
team performance for Rangers. I'll try and catch my breath as I give the old outro here. I've been TJ Novanine too. That has been Rocky Boy Johnson. Take care of yourselves. All the best and bye bye.